The landmark Respect for Marriage Act is on its way to President Biden's desk after the House advanced the bill. 39 Republicans joined all Democrats in supporting the measure, which provides federal protections for same-sex and interracial marriages, marriages whose security is now under threat from the Supreme Court. In his opinion, ending a woman's right to choose, Justice Clarence Thomas said that the right to same-sex marriage and even same-sex relationships should be revisited. That's well out of step with most of uh, uh, what Americans think on the precipice of 2023. Wisconsin Senator Tammy Baldwin, who is the first openly gay member of the United States Senate who introduced the bill in the upper chamber, attributed its bipartisan support to the visibility of the LGBTQ community. I think about um, as someone who's been long a part of the LGBTQ community about how progress is made and so much of it has to do with visibility and people knowing us and knowing our families knowing um, it, which replaces myth and stereotype if you will okay so hold that thought for a second so many people knowing us knowing us and knowing us are knowing our families and that replaces myth and stereotype okay hold that for a second yesterday 169 republicans like 36 of their Republican colleagues in the Senate, voted against those families, including the Republican Congresswoman Vicki Hartzler of Missouri, who made headlines for crying on the House floor. But she doesn't have an excuse of not knowing these families or the LGBTQ community because a gay person is part of her own close family. Here's her nephew, Andrew, in a video that went viral today. Today, a United States Congresswoman, my Aunt Vicky, started crying because gay people like me can get married. I hope and pray that my colleagues will find the courage to join me in opposing this misguided and this dangerous bill. I yield back. So despite coming out to my aunt this past February, I guess she's still just as much as a homophobe. Let's be clear. Obergefell is not in danger, but people and institutions of faith are. Aunt Vicki, that's not right. Institutions of faith like religious universities are not being silenced. They're being empowered by the U.S. government to discriminate against tens of thousands of LGBTQ students because of religious exemptions, but they still receive federal funding. The bill's implications submit to our ideology or be silenced. It's more like you want the power to force your religious beliefs onto everyone else. And because you don't have that power, you feel like you're being silenced. But you're not. You're just going to have to learn to coexist with all of us. And I'm sure it's not that hard. Certainly doesn't make it look that hard. Andrew Hartzler is the nephew of the Republican Congresswoman Vicki Hartzler. Andrew, good to see you. Thank you for uh, for posting that video. How do you feel watching that? I mean, you, you you had a big smile on your face and you made a really good argument about it. It's not going to be that hard for us all to live together. But how how does that make you feel that that was your aunt? Yeah, I mean, honestly, I wish I could say that I was surprised when I saw my aunt's display on the House floor yesterday, but. I wasn't. She actually has a long history of targeted attacks towards the queer community. And from her speech, what really stood out to me was her mere disregard for the power of her words. I think like so often leaders or people like in positions of leadership, they neglect to realize how much power their words truly have and that those words have consequences. So unfortunately for my aunt Vicky, she belongs to this class of politicians that have a twisted and weaponized their own faith and used it to target the queer community by framing them as a threat to their religion. And this has real life consequences where these words, there are extremists in our society and people who take things to the extreme, which would result in what we saw in Colorado mm -hmm. or real life instances of violence. Um, I also thought it was super interesting that she only invoked religious freedom when it was used to take away the freedom of someone outside of her religion. When that's, that's not what my definition of freedom of religion is. Um, and it would have made sense to me if she was crying as a result of someone having violence enacted on them. But 
gay marriage is no reason to cry. Gay marriage is no reason to cry. You, you actually come from a religious background. You actually had a religious education. Um, tell me about that. You, you, you come from a religious family, but your parents were, were supportive of who you are. So you've got some, some schisms in your family. Yeah, um, I come from a deeply conservative background. My my parents, I wouldn't say they were very supportive of who I was. Um, they, um, when I came out at the age of 14, I was sent to conversion therapy. And then I like saw a conversion therapist off and on until the end of high school. And then I went to Oral Roberts University where my parents thought that I would be safe from many gay people. But actually there was a lot of, kids and students that were just like me. Um, but what's actually really interesting is there are hundreds of thousands of LGBTQ students at these religious universities across the nation. And these students are legally able to be discriminated against. So they are being denied admission, denied readmission, being expelled, being forced to go into conversion-like therapy, um, and they are having a form of violence enacted on them. So after I graduated from Oral Roberts University, I partnered with REAP, the Religious Exemption Accountability Project, and together with 40 other plaintiffs from religious institutions across the country, we are advocating for all students at all universities to receive equal protections. And um, because when I was a junior at Oral Roberts University, I was reported to the academic dean's office and for um, homosexual activity, as they call it. And ultimately, I was forced into more conversion therapy like wow. programs. Yeah. Um, and then that was right around like before COVID happened and then COVID happened and I like, kept my head low, graduated, and then I got involved with free. But what's really important to say is we went to school to get an education, uh -huh. not to have our sexuality or gender identity conform to that of the university's preference. And we have to stop funding discrimination.